Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Now I have been so looking forward to doing this video because I did a video not too long ago around how I was using this Roseland collection and these three items that I got here and how I created a whole lot of cards with them and these are some of the cards here that we created just using those three things that you saw on screen a minute ago. So because I had a little bit left over, obviously I just um, was had a, re a really good <laughs> card making session and then these are the things that I had left over which is still so many things. So I wanted to keep creating because we want to make the most of the supplies that we go ahead and purchase and I know that these were really popular with you guys and I know that um, lots of people were really interested in them so uh, especially if you went ahead and purchased some, I am hopeful to give you another video with some fresh new ideas. So this is just what I had left over, obviously. Now, I'm going to really struggle to cut into some of these. <laughs> um, but I know I want to, and I know they are going to be beautiful, beautiful cards. Now, I will just say that um, I know that these sold out so fast last time everywhere, but... As of this voiceover, which should be fairly current, there is scrapbook.com have these all back in stock. Simon Says Stamp have them back in stock and Joggles have them back in stock. So I have the links to all of those shops down below if you would like to go and see them. I also have the links to the Blue Land collection, which is literally the same except for with a blues hue <laughs> to it rather than the um, pinks and the Roseland collection, the collection sorry so there is the blue land and the Roseland collection and they are both stunning I am struggling with myself to decide if I need to get the blue land collection because I am a blues girl and I do thoroughly love it so this is going to be my first card now I wanted to work with vellum today to kind of um, just to challenge myself a little bit and to add an extra element obviously I'm just working with the three elements. So I have the die cuts, the ephemera, and the little 8x8 pad. Although the 12x12 is obviously going to work pretty well if that's the size that you are keen for as well. So here I have cut out a little, it doesn't matter if it's 5x5, 6x6, or 4x4. I cut out a square of this beautiful, beautiful paper. And as I said, I want to incorporate vellum into each one of these cards. So there's going to be a definite vellum uh, element to each one of these. Now I want to have a big, bold sort of see-through window here because I don't want to cover up all of that gorgeous paper. So I'm going to use my Hero Arts Infinity Circle dies and just flick through to see one that takes up, you know, as much as I possibly can of my square. I pop a little bit of the low tech tape, the mint ta tape on to secure it, pop it through, run it through my die cutting machine and I have a beautiful die cut ready to go. Now this is going to go on top of the piece that you saw me cut a second to go but I also wanted to make sure that there was going to be a nice beautiful border um, and I may as well use the same paper there are no well there are some solids they all have a little bit of texture to them in this paper pad I'm not gonna lie I'm very tempted to go back and buy a couple of them <laughs> two or so more because there are a couple of pages in the book that I just really struggle to use they are so beautiful and I try very hard not to hoard um, things but wow this is just it speaks to me I really Really love this one and so I've been really enjoying it but there the thing that I love is that there are circle toppers there are tags there are postcards there are all these different elements in there that um yeah, I just absolutely appreciate and love the collection that they've put together. It's brilliant. Now, this is the vellum that I use and will be using the whole time. I have the Lawn Fawn vellum. This is 36 pound vellum. So it's a little bit heavier and I like that about it. It is the perfect weight in my opinion because as I've said before, you can do all of the good things around uh, heat embossing and running it through em uh, embossing folders. So dry embossing, you can do... All all those good things without it warping or um, you know doing any of that silly thing so for this card I've got my big uh, circle that I have there and then I'm just going to sort of rip the vellum this torn vellum I do love a good torn vellum and so I'm going to have a torn vellum strip that goes through the center and this is going to help me pop my little focal points on as well and this is one of the things 
as I said, I only purchased three things. I purchased the die cuts, the ephemera, and the 8x8 paper pad. And I that just covers me completely with elements that I need to put on. It covers me with focal points. It covers me with backgrounds. All the good things. So this is my kind of card making. Now I put a little bit of double-sided tape on the edges there just to secure that. And I'll just cut off the excess. I could have measured beforehand, but after is just as good. And then truly, it's just a case of going through and trying things out. I know I wanted a little sentiment here from the all occasions, um, you know, the paper rose sets that I <laughs> that I absolutely love and am just using thoroughly for I don't even know how long, but these are just beautiful. And of course, I'm just going for a classic happy birthday. I want to make several different kinds of cards today. I do get asked a lot of questions around how do I figure out what I want to put on the card because it's easy, well it's easiest to create lots of beautiful backgrounds and then it can be hard to uh, think about what needs to go on the front and that's one of the reasons why I purchased all three of these items because it takes away some of that decision and choice or it narrows it down for me. Then when it comes to it, I just play around. This is what I do here. I try something, I move it in, move it out, change it around, add an element and then eventually I feel like something will stick and I like the look of something I mean honestly all of these things that I'm popping down here I really do like the look of and could have more than happily you know have gone with any of them I wasn't sure if I wanted the bird if I wanted the butterfly if I wanted to add in extra pine cones I thought I wanted a long sentiment but then I changed my mind and so I cut it and now I'm going to stack it one on top of the other and I'm just going to kind of nestle it into that little space there just to balance out the front of that um, card front and so happy birthday I am going to put some foam tape on the back now of course you could have made this into a beautiful shaker card um, this is not a shaker card today so I'm just going to put plenty of foam on to support everything all of those embellishments are not see-through at all so this helps me tremendously when it comes to putting together Together, um, you know being able to put foam tape on the back of my elements so it supports all of that vellum and then I'm just going to line this up so it's got a little border around all of it and then I will be able to put this down onto my card base as well and then that's going to give it another white border around the edge now you just have to close your eyes when you're putting glue on the back of these beautiful pages because oh I do love that seat but that's okay <laughs> I love this beautiful card too so that is card number one and we are pretty much done and dusted you could go ahead and add a few little iridescent um, little embellishments or gems some clear gems would be beautiful maybe even some rose or white ones would also look stunning um, but I might do that go ahead and do that all at the end now this next part here I love the bottom of this and as I said they I just have to <laughs> really think carefully about which side I want to use in fact as I'm doing this voiceover I'm convincing myself that I think I might need to go and get <laughs> another few of these um just because I love them and when things spark joy for me that's a great reason to have them in my stash when they make me happy when I can think of so many ways that I could go about using these that's the type of items that I would love to have in my craft space so I have been a little bit careful there on the back not to um, to try and save that window so that I can perhaps use that for another one. I am a little bit, um, I do do a little bit of uh, calculating around trying to save certain items from one side or the other, but sometimes it just can't be helped. And that's okay too, because it's better to use this and to have people enjoy these cards, to have people see them and to be able to spend time creating them um, than have it hidden away in a drawer in a paper pack. So that's what I tell myself anyhow. This one here, I have split this in half. Now, I can't say I necessarily knew where I was going with this, but I really like the end result. I really did want some layered vellum strips, some sort of kind of, kind of reminding me of like ruffles um, was what I was going for. So I'm tearing longer and longer pieces of this vellum. Now this vellum tears beautifully. I will say, you know, it tears in a somewhat straight line. Oh, I love it. It is great vellum to work with. I can't speak highly enough of it. Um, and then here I'm just seeing where I want all of the pieces to go together and this will obviously become a little bit trickier to see as you go up. Now I do want to be able to see through everything and see that background paper so I wasn't sure how many sort of layers that I would get away with but I felt like I could still see the pattern of my desk through the fourth layer. So I thought I would go with, with that as a measuring guide um, but you'll see what happens in just a little bit. 
So now I'm just going to use some uh, double-sided tape. Now, honestly, this will be pretty hidden, so I'm not too worried about this. And I'll just use a piece of it to go through each and every layer. So that will work really nicely. Now, by all means, if you didn't want to do the ripped vellum uh, sort of part here, I was thinking that if you used a gorgeous lacy border dye or even some real lace or something cut into paper, as I said, the border dies, um, and you stacked these up, would look stunning as well underneath this. Or even the technique with the circles where you kind of do the scalloped circles, uh, that would look stunning under here too. Um, all sorts of good ideas. But as I said, I'm roughly working with vellum today, so that's what I'm going to stick with. And I think it's just something just a little bit different for me to try and include vellum in every card that I created. So now I'm going to put down this bottom piece that we cut off to begin with. And then all I do is I just push it hard against the bottom of my desk and make sure that everything is sort of lined up and I can adjust it because um, the glue is obviously liquid glue. If there's anything overhanging, just give it a wee snip. And then I've got my layers here ready to go. And this is where I'm deciding that I think four layers is one too many. <laughs> so I'm actually going to rip off the bottom layer and that's much better. I can still see the pattern through this one. Now this is long than I need it to be and that's okay so I just stuck it down and cut off the excess edges I have my little piece that I chose from the ephemera and I'm going to make sure that that is well and truly um, stuck down with some double-sided tape and then pop this I was deciding whether to put it over top of that one um, because it's actually a very similar pattern but then I thought these little birdies looked really sweet and I might pop those on my cart so this kind of lines up all pretty nicely and I'm going to pop those birdies on there too I think they're pretty cute now this card feels a little little bit empty to me without a really uh, a solid little sentiment or something so I felt like that was missing so you could definitely just leave this as is I've been a big fan recently of um, not including sentiments and I've noticed that they've been really popular cards but I think sometimes it is lovely to have one as just as much so I am going to add with this one in this is the Pink Fresh Studios happy birthday now this has lots of um I would call them like almost good for the inside of cards. They're fantastic. It's got some big, bold sentiments as well. And then it's got all these lovely sayings that would go nicely inside. But I'm also going to use this one for the front. And it says a little bit older and a lot more fabulous. And I just feel like... Even though it's not necessarily a straightforward sentiment, I think it's pretty obvious that it's probably for a birthday. <laughs> so I really like this. I did need to um, pull my uh, vellum up there, but I think this looks pretty good. I really like this gorgeous little card that we have created. And none of these cards took me very long at all to create. Right, we are here for the next one. Now I had this little scrap of paper from last time. This was already pre-cut from something else I had done. And I really love that little flower part there. And I thought, this is just screaming out to be a pocket. I feel like this is just, it feels like a pocket to me. And I wanted a vellum window in my pocket. So that's what we are going to create. So I'm taking some fussy cutting scissors. Now I will say that this has like almost a, um, a grid-like pattern on the background there. So I was able to get my, you know, up the left-hand side and across the top really nice and straight thanks to that pattern. <laughs> but other than that, I just fussy cut around the rest of those gorgeous plants and foliage. And then this is where I'm going to uh, add in my vellum. Now I'm just going to trim up my pocket a little bit. And then add some little just freehand cuts. They don't have to be super specific. As I said, that grid line helps a little bit on the, um, the background there. And then round off these top two corners. I really just wing it through my card making. I enjoy this so much and I enjoy spending time doing this. And I love sharing it uh, with this community because you guys are fabulous. I am so lucky. I feel so lucky and I'm so grateful. So thank you so much. This video is definitely a longer one. So if you're making it all the way through, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, now, here's the part where I decided to make this into more of a pocket. Again, this was a little scrap left over. And I thought, yeah, that's just enough that I can make that into like a little pocket flap. And at the time, I thought I was going to put this on like a pretty plain background, maybe even just a white or maybe, um, you know, use an embossing folder or something to create some uh, texture into the background. But um, yeah, this definitely went in a different direction and that's okay too. And that's okay because I thought that the um, vellum window was going to be my vellum element to the card. But yeah, you'll see in just a minute. Now, all I've done is literally made a triangle. I just need to make it a little bit smaller. And um, handily enough on my background here, that's relatively 
pretty much a right angle. So I'm going to use that to help me <laughs> line up my pocket there and just give it a rounded corner to the top. I put some double sided tape on the back here. Again, this would make a beautiful little shaker cut, but that was not my plan at all. I wanted this to be a little pocket. That was my thought behind this. So I put my piece of vellum behind there. And then when I add the foam tape, I'm going to add the foam tape just to three sides. As I said, I was thinking about whether I wanted some, um, you know, like some white foliage poking out the top, whether I wanted to put a little letter or a little postcard that is from um, the paper pack, from the paper pack would be a great idea. Uh, all sorts of things. I was, my mind was absolutely churning with ideas. So as I said, at this point, I'm only putting foam on three of the sides. Now, this is where I decided to create a background. I can't look at the background of here, the back side of this paper for too long. Otherwise, I wouldn't go ahead and cut it. <laughs> you saw me take a couple of looks at it and I just have to put it to the side. So this is a relatively plain piece of background. That's what I was kind of meaning. They're all textured and they've all got a little bit of things going on, but I'm um, pretty quiet. I have very roughly cut this to be, I know, look at me checking the background here. I'm laughing as I'm voicing this over because I keep checking. I can't help myself. Now, um, I'm going to take off both corners of this. If you need a little pencil to help with the guideline for ripping, then do that. That's what I find helpful too. Um, but I have just sort of gently ripped this and I love those torn edges. That's what I'm going for. It's sort of the beautiful elegance of the papers and the soft you know, the lovely soft pink and white tones, and yet these torn rough um, edges are just a real contradiction, and I really love that, so a lovely contrast. Now, I'm going to add in some vellum, of course, and I just thought, why not add in another ripped vellum edge here? and just add that on as some extra texture. Again, if you don't have the vellum, I would suggest um, a lovely, gorgeous lacy border dye or even some real lace or something would look stunning coming out the side here. Even some uh, burlap ribbon would look beautiful. Uh, I can think of all sorts of things, but um, I'm sure you'll have something in your stash ready to go. I use some double-sided tape. Again, all of this is just roughly cut. It's not measured to the size of the card that I need at the moment. But once I have both of my vellum pieces on and you sort of just choose the best spot that really works for, you know, how the ripping turned out, cut down some rough pieces and then put plenty of double-sided tape on the back here. When I'm using vellum, I prefer to use uh, double-sided tape rather than um, like a wet medium, like my liquid glue, just because sometimes it can affect the vellum depending on how much you put on. And obviously I just find that the it adheres much faster um, rather than the slow dry on the vellum because it's a type of plastic. So um, it takes much longer to dry on that than it does on regular paper. So I just like that extra little element there with the extra little uh, vellum rip. And then this is where I'm going to add my little pocket onto the front. Now, as I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I like it. The little pocket part doesn't really fit because it sinks into the background too much. I like these extra little elements. I like the little birdie. <laughs> and then I was like, I think I can't help myself. I think maybe I want to turn this into a shaker card. I want to change the plan. And so I don't have the... Um, the last piece of foam tape on. So here I'm still trying to convince myself that uh, I don't need to make it into a shaker. So I pop this down and then, no, I changed my mind. <laughs> and so I will put another piece of foam tape on. I'm just going to use some really plain iridescent sequins for this because I feel like adding in any more colors at this point is just um, sort of you know, not needed. I don't need to think about that coordination. So I'm just going to keep it really, really simple. And these are just some very, very plain cut sequins um, that are going to fit behind there beautifully. And they just give that gentle shimmer rather than being a whole new color behind there. So um, I don't have a huge collection of sequins and all those sorts of things that would match the colors perfectly. Um, so you may have more than I do, that's for sure. But you can see that these move around freely. They just have that little bit of sparkle through there, the perfect amount showing through that vellum. So although it is no longer a pocket, I am going to find a way to include that little piece that we made. Now I love these extra elements. I think they're just a little bit more um, to fill out and even up the card. So I'm going to add a little bit of foam just to sort of even it out where um, it won't be sitting on top of our little pocket. And then where it does sit on top of the pocket, I just add some liquid glue to make sure that it stays in place. 
pop that one down the bottom and I'm finally going to use my little bird. I do love this little bird. I have been um, wanting to see if I can get some more sort of bird ephemera, some gorgeous little birds. I think they make really lovely changes from um, flowers and butterflies. However, I'm not a big fan of the white that is often around um, die cuts and ephemera and things. So I'm on the hunt for some little birds. Um, but anyway, the pocket is a little too big and I've actually already glued down the bird, but I really want to use the pocket and it's just too big as is. So I'm going to really trim this down pretty significantly and just make it much, much smaller. And then of course I'm going to have it, instead of coming up above the pocket, it's going to sort of hang down, you know, like the flat that would come over the pocket. And then those ones have a little button, you know, like a button closure. I mean, this is, this is not reasonable obviously because <laughs> no pocket is filled with beautiful sequins and, but this is card making and we get to do whatever we want. So um, I love the little bird there. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and add a gorgeous little button. I found a little white pearl button that would fit nicely on the front there that was going to be a pretty good size so I will use some liquid glue this will take a minute to dry really solid but when it does it will be perfect and good to go and that is my last card for today using plenty of vellum this one is a shaker card and then of course you want to have a play with it thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for being here as I said there will be all of the links down in the description box below. This sold out really, really fast last time. Um, and so I know at the moment that all three of those shops I mentioned earlier, scrapbook.com, Simon Says Stamp and Joggles all have these and I will have the links below to everything else we have used as well too. Thank you so much for joining me. Here's some more videos you might like, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.